Hello everyone and welcome back to the workshop. I wanted to make a quick video about lathe tooling, more specifically high speed steel versus carbide, because whilst they do achieve the same thing, they really are different and they both have their own distinct advantages and disadvantages and it can be a little bit overwhelming at times, especially if you are new to turning. And because tooling has the ability to get really expensive pretty quickly, I thought I'd make a quick video about breaking them down and my experience with them on the mini lathe. First of all, let's talk about what a cutting tool is. A cutting tool is essentially a tool that is used to remove material from a workpiece. And the tool needs to be harder than the material that you are removing. For instance, if this delicious spring onion and chive cheese is the workpiece, then this cracker is effectively a cutting tool. Just look at it break a clean chip. Now unfortunately, the standard cracker doesn't fit in our quick change tool holder. If it did, we would have a formidable lathe tool on our hands. For modern tools, machinists turn to three different types of tools high speed steel, carbide insert tools, and brazed carbide. And brazed carbide is probably the least used tooling nowadays, and it probably deserves its own video. Today, I'm gonna to stick to talking about carbide inserts and high speed steel. First, let's take a general look at high speed steel. High speed steel is a type of steel that is used for tools, and it's probably one of the most common steels in the world. And there's a really good reason for that. High speed steel is a great steel to make tools from. Not only is it really affordable, but it's really easy to grind tools into shape and then sharpen them, making really effective cutting tools. High speed steel is usually steel with a mixture of carbon, molybdenum and tungsten, which increases its wear resistance and resistance to heat. Turning on the lathe produces a lot of heat, and old cutting tools, which are made from carbon steel, tend to lose their temper at around about 175 degrees and up. High speed steel is really good at resisting that, hence why it's used as a cutting tool. Carbide, however, takes these properties and then turns them up to 11. Carbide was designed to take much deeper cuts than steel and be much more resistant to heat and wear, which is why it's used in a lot of heavy machining today. And unlike steel, carbide comes in the form of a grey powder, which is then pressed into a mould, sintered in an oven, and given an additional coating, usually of titanium nitride or something similar. This process produces an insert which can be very easily placed in a tool holder, and just like that, it's ready to be used. Now the question here is, which one is best for you? Well, first of all, let's take a look at cost. Hands down, high speed steel is cheaper, no matter which way you look at it. High speed steel is usually bought in small blanks, which you then grind yourself into a tool. For instance, a quarter inch blank that's about two and a half inches long would probably cost me about four bucks in Australia. And these blanks will last a lifetime. This one here I've used for about one and a half years and I've only removed about an eighth of an inch of material. High speed steel is just great because it can be resharpened, reshaped very easily. Most of the time all you need is five seconds on a whetstone or diamond stone and the edge can really easily be brought back into shape. The cost of high speed steel can go up a little bit if you need to invest in a bench grinder and additional grinding wheels to shape the blanks, but they are generally pretty low cost nowadays and have a lot of use outside of grinding high speed steel. And as an added benefit, if you have any broken high speed steel drill bits, you can easily just regrind them for use as lathe tools or boring bars, and from experience they are really useful. Now for carbide, a lot of people will say that getting into carbide tooling is super expensive, but from what I've experienced on the hobby market, that simply isn't always the case. For instance, this set of tools only cost me about $40 Australian, and the holders also came with a bunch of inserts already in them. 
And as well as that, a pack of 10 inserts from China will only run you back about $15. Now I fully understand that proper Kyocera inserts from Japan as well as the tool holders will probably run you back about $150 for the tool holder and about $15 per insert. But on a hobby lathe, I don't think you're gonna to see too much difference between a cheap and expensive insert and tool holder. And for that matter, I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality of the insert and tool holder that you get from China. The only thing I don't like about them is that they use a screw to hold in the insert, which is okay, but I do prefer ones with a clamp or a wedge style. But for the cutting loads that you would get on a mini lathe, I don't think it matters too much. And as well as that, the tool holder isn't hardened. I think it's made from mild steel, but after almost two years of use, I'm pretty happy with them. And for the extra money that you are spending on carbide tooling, what you really are buying is convenience, at least on a mini lathe. And convenience in the sense that you don't need to do any tool grinding whatsoever or honing the edges. And for anyone who doesn't want the hassle of grinding tools, inserts are a really good option. Carbide inserts are pressed into shape in the factory, and that includes the cutting edge, all the relief angles, and the complicated chip breakers. And when the tool dulls or it breaks, all you need to do is rotate the insert to a new cutting edge, and once all the edges are used, all you need to do is throw away the insert and pop in a new one, and away you go. It's as simple as that. However, if you need to do a custom turn, maybe you need a boring tool with very specific reliefs and you don't have a tool for the job, you're either going to need to go and find a carbide tool which will solve the job, which might be very expensive and take a lot of time to get, or you do what most people do and grind up a one-off tool from high-speed steel. Something that's a lot quicker to do and is ultimately much cheaper. Because even though it may be a little bit of a hassle to grind up your own tools, the ability to make custom tools in situ for very little is very useful in a workshop. And it must be said, grinding your own high speed steel tools is not that difficult, at least making basic tools, and it's very forgiving in terms of how precise you are to making the tool. Another mark against carbide is the tool holders are designed to hold one specific type of insert in one orientation. If you need to use an insert in a different configuration, you'll be stuck with either buying a brand new tool holder or making your own. Another mark against carbide is it's a very brittle material. Even though it's very hard and wear resistant, it chips very easily. And carbide is very sensitive to the setup. Carbide likes a very rigid and consistent setup. And if the cut is interrupted or you drop the tool or the lathe stalls while the tool is in the workpiece, the chances are more likely than not that the carbide insert has probably chipped. And with carbide, all you can really do is swap out the cutting edge. With high speed steel though, it's much more resilient. It's very hard, but it's not brittle. And if the cutting edge ever gets damaged, all you have to do is resharpen it or regrind it and you are good to use that tool again. One big advantage for carbide though is its consistency, something that you really don't get from high speed steel. With high speed steel, since you are grinding the tool by hand, each tool is going to cut slightly differently and you're going to need to hone in your tool if it doesn't cut perfectly or leave a good surface finish right out of the gate. A lot of people do solve this by using proper tool grinders or jigs, but these can be a lot more expensive. And on the whole, carbide is still going to be much more consistent. Carbide inserts are manufactured to a tolerance by the manufacturer. This is designated by the third letter in the insert name. And because of this insert tolerance, each insert will pretty much produce the exact same results as another of the exact same insert. Hence why manufacturers love them. And that's one reason why I enjoy using carbide. If I ever swap out the insert, I know roughly how the insert is going to machine. Another huge advantage for carbide is its cutting edge will stay much more consistent for longer. And we're probably talking about 10 times longer. It is a big difference. And that's not me saying high speed steel loses its cutting edge really quickly, because it doesn't. But let's say for instance I needed to turn a thousand pen blanks. 
If I were to use carbide, I could probably turn all of them without needing to swap out the insert. But if I was using high speed steel for the same work, I would probably resharpen the high speed steel every 200th or so pen blank. And that seems like a big win for carbide, but we are missing one final piece of the puzzle, and that's the cutting geometry that we can achieve with high speed steel and the speed of cutting we can achieve, at least on a mini lathe. High speed steel has the advantage that it can undoubtedly produce a much sharper tool than carbide, and sharp tools have what is known as a positive side rake, and as a general rule, the sharper your tool is, the less power is required from the lathe to turn material. And this is something that we'd need to consider because most mini lathes don't have that much power at their disposal. If we compare a carbide insert and a high speed steel lathe tool, we can easily see that the high speed steel lathe tool is much sharper. And it's for that reason that I'm able to take much deeper and much faster cuts when I'm using high speed steel tools. To really take advantage of the cutting ability of carbide, we really need a lathe that can really push the tool into the material to remove it. And we're talking about a machine with multitudes more horsepower than we have on the mini lathe. And that's why you commonly hear people say mini lathes probably don't have the power to effectively utilize carbide. Though don't take it as carbide just can't be used on the mini lathe, because as a lot of people prove, it absolutely can be used. However, carbide simply forces you to use a lighter depth of cut because it just doesn't have a sharp cutting edge. I personally think that high speed steel is the way to go on a mini lathe since you are really limited by the power and rigidity of the lathe. Properly ground high speed steel tools will allow you to achieve the most out of your mini lathe. That's not to say I don't use carbide because I absolutely do use carbide. For one, I prefer to use carbide when I'm cutting steel, since the carbide deals with the heat much better, and I also use it on aluminium, since I get a very consistent and pretty decent finish. And for filming, it's really useful to use carbide, since the 12mm tool allows for a little bit more stick out and rigidity for better filming. But for everyday turning in brass and plastic, I'm always going to use high speed steel, and that is generally what I recommend to use. But if you want to skip the hassle of grinding your own tools, there's no issue in using carbide. On a final note, if you want to buy carbide inserts, I'd suggest that you get ones with a sharper cutting edge. I've had a lot of good results from these triangular TCMT and diamond DCMT ones which cut a lot more effectively than these CCMG ones that I first got. These ones here had a really blunt edge and they really limited how much you could take off with each pass. I'd also recommend that you get holders that are at least 8mm tall, however the best ones that I've used are at least 12mm tall and up. These ones here are 6mm ones and they are way too flimsy for a lot of deep cuts.